Hi guys, this is Pestilli and welcome to another Escape from Tarkov video. Alright, this is my complete leveling guide covering everything you're going to need to know to level from level 1 all the way up to level 40 and all the little tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. This wipe alone I've already leveled to 43 times including uh, 1 to 40 in a single stream. My main's level 51 at the moment, which I stopped at 51 because I wanted to try something different. I've also done 1 to 40 in a hardcore mode, and I've already started another uh, 1 to 40 using a, a different challenge called the Nomad. So from all that knowledge, in this video, I'm going to cover the most effective ways to level, why leveling to level 40 is important, the weapon choices, ammo choices, armor choices, eco runs and making money, what to do with traders, what, uh, which ways are the best way to level them, as well as what to do after level 40. So without further ado, let's crack straight into it. So the first thing we're going to cover is the most effective way to level. From all my experience in all these levelings that I've done from 1 to 40, I've noticed that quest is probably the most fastest way you can level. Unless you're someone like Warren or someone who, like me that's pumped out factory so much now that you know all the ins and outs and you can get on pretty good streaks. Factory and customs farming is a very effective way of leveling uh, via killing people and scavs and you will get a lot of XP that way but you'll probably only sit around 30 to 40,000 XP per hour if you're really good at it. You've got to calculate also into the time how long it takes you to load into maps, changing setups, if you die, time loss from death and even good players will still only get between 30 and 40,000 XP per hour on those maps. If you have like a really exceptional run uh, or multiple runs in a row, you can get more than that. I'm not saying that that's the max you can get, but on a general over a long period of time, that's where the, the better players will sit. But for the general person who's playing the game, the most effective way they can level is by doing quests. Now, I worked out that if you do 113 out of the 122 tasks, which is the majority of the tasks you'll actually be able to achieve by level 40, you can get more than that, but you're probably gonna have to get a little bit more assistance from someone who's already level 40 for getting certain items, say, from the ragman task or the, or the mechanic task. So this will mean if you've done all these tasks, you'll have about 1.2 million XP just from tasks alone and it's 1.87 million xp to get level 40 which means you're gonna to have to farm about 670,000 xp on your own through all the maps you do now if you could get 10,000 xp a raid you do 67 raids and you'd have that 670,000 xp covered but the general person isn't gonna do it I don't even do that I average between two and five thousand XP per raid on a good day, and then sometimes when I'm dying a lot, I'm going to get a lot less. Obviously, now if you're going to be doing your quests, the way I try to do my quests is I try and make it so as many tasks will overlap as possible. A good example is Friend from the West Part One and Punisher Part Four. Both of them require you to kill uh, PMCs or USEX on shoreline, and it's better to try and do both of those at the same time rather than. Uh, getting your 10 USEC kills, then have to go back and kill 20 PMC kills. I know that's a very time consuming one for me, and so what I try and do is make that overlap as best as possible. And then, when if you get Friend from the West Part 1 complete while you're still killing your 20 USEC, you'll start the Peacekeeper storyline and you'll actually be doing Peacekeeper tasks, which are all located on, on Shoreline at the same time, making it so if you do bump into PMCs, you are actually working towards another task in itself. Another good example for trying to stack up tasks as much as possible. After I've done Shootout Picnic, which requires you to kill 14 scavs, I don't actually go back to woods until I have at least three or four tasks for it. You'll get these tasks later in the storylines with our Propor, Therapist, Peacekeeper, and also Ragman. And I personally don't do very well on woods, so I leave that until I have four tasks. That way, it doesn't really matter because there's no real choke points on those tasks as well, and you can just get all four of them done at the same time. This is just making more efficient time out of every time you're in a map. Now, if you are having trouble with any of these tasks, I do have task guides in the links below. I am trying to update them as new tasks come out. My gunsmith ones are still a little bit dated because uh, they've been changed over the last probably two, three patches, major patches. But I will try my best to get these up to date as possible. Another thing you can do to also increase the amount of XP you get per raid is every time you see a dead body, walk up to it and just press F. A little saying that it's common from a Call of Duty meme is F for respect because there was a, a funeral where you had to press F to respect the... Uh, the fallen soldier so if you go up to everybody you see scav no matter what just press f you will see a little bit of xp come up down the bottom right a little trick that i've also noted that if you get over 100 xp on a scav it's worth searching the pockets and the backpack because it's a good chance they're going to have something of high value either a key or rubles or euros so why is it important to level to level 40 at level 40 is when you unlock all the traders at the moment and give you full access to all the best armors and weapons in the game, as well as the modifications for these weapons. The downside of reaching level 40 at the moment is after level 40, there is no end game. So you're effectively just taking the best gear you can to either help out your mates, work with your mates, and just have some fun, 
or purely just to go around and shoot up and kill as many PMCs as possible in a raid. So what I recommend is actually using this time to perfect or improve the ways that you know how to level. So then when the game does become complete and you got 1.0 or the end game does get implemented later on in further patches, you're actually going to be able to get to level 40 easier and have access to that end game sooner. So moving on to weapon choices. Now I've already done a full loadout guide on 1 to 40 on what I recommend for each level uh, in between. However, I'm going to cover certain points using uh, for the weapons, ammo, and the armor choices. Now with weapon choices, there's really two options you're going for. You're going for rounds per minute, which is your full autos um, and how fast they fire, versus your damage outputs. So for example, your single shots like your SKS and your M1As. A good example is using a Glock 18C or an APB or a Keta, which has an extremely fast firing rate for either a pistol or a submachine gun, as well as you've got your AK and M4 options, which fire fast, faster rates uh, at full auto. Then the other option you have is a single fire shot, which is semi-automatic, like an SKS or an M1A, which does high damage, but doesn't have that fast firing rate. The pros and cons can be outweighed in either way, but something to take note of, on maps like Shoreline and Interchange at the moment, when there's a lot of frame drop, even though you're at the moment, and in patch 0.10 it's meant to be fixed, rounds are currently linked to your FPS by um, how fast you can fire them. So the lower FPS you have, the slower you're going to fire at full auto. But something to note, at a semi-automatic rifle, it doesn't matter how fast you click, if your frames drop, you won't be able to fire very fast. So I actually personally think on a map like Shoreline or Interchange, you're better off using a full auto firearm to just give yourself that little bit of hope that firing full auto with that frame loss, you'll actually get those shots off faster and be able to take that shot to get the face hitbox or do the damage. However, on maps like Woods and Customs even and Factory, those single fire shots aren't as bad or even if not, they're better because you can actually do well aimed shots and get those head headshots a lot easier. Next, moving on to your ammo choices. This goes directly into respect with your fast firing and your high damage because you have the two options of going for your highest flesh damage or the highest pen damage. If you're using a gun like the Glock 18C, APB or a Keta, generally it's better to go for the high flesh damage. You're going to either aim for the face, the legs, or if they're not wearing armor, then you can go for the chest. But if you have access to some of the higher pens and you can know you can get someone in the head and get through their armor or face shield, then a higher pen is probably your better option. If you're really good at one tapping people in the head with an M1A or an SKS, I highly suggest going for that pen over the flesh damage. Leg matter is a real thing. And if you get a shotgun like an MP153, aim for those legs with those uh, buckshot or the slugs and you'll rip people apart. It's not actually a bad option, particularly with how overpowered, or in my opinion, how powerful armor is at the moment. What I need to stress here right at this point is it really is what works best for you. If you find that you can get your crosshair on the top of that person's face or on that head and, and tap them really well, then probably going for that high pen is better for you. If you're not very good at aiming for people's faces, but you can aim low and get them in the legs nice and quick, the higher flesh damage is probably better for you. It really comes down to how you play better, and what I suggest is actually experiment with what works for you. Some guns you'll just have no luck with, and then other guns you'll work really well with. And that's where, in Tarkov, the beauty is. Because what works for you won't work, uh, might not work for me, and vice versa. When it comes to armor choices, I pre pretty much go with two to three principles. Either use no, no armor at all, or use the best armor you can possibly get. Don't just go, oh, I'll just go for a budget kind of setup with armor. The one armor I probably do recommend that if you are going to go for a budget setup, and this is that third option, getting a packer purely to stop scavs from one tapping you in the chest. A packer will probably stop most shotgun shots as well as pistol shots from scavs and it will just slow down the rate that they'll just destroy you in the chest. You can trade for these We're using five face shields as, and these are a pretty common item that you can loot. Otherwise, you can buy them quite cheaply now. So I don't actually mind having the packer, but it's it, you really need to decide if you're going to go for the best armor possible to the, to the cheapest armor or just no armor at all. This moves into my next topic, eco runs and making money. It's totally up to you how you make money in this game. I have three runs that I pretty much run every time I need to make money. Two of them are on shoreline ba based around safe bitcoins and the other one is just based around pure loot in the uh, major rooms within the resort. The other one is interchange going for mostly the tech rooms and I'll have links to all three of these loot runs below. How after talking to a lot of people, my opinion on loot runs is you'd want to go in with a pistol or if you want to spend that little bit of money, go an SKS or an MP153 shotgun. But personally, over, overall, I really just think about going in with a pistol these days. You can one tap a scav in the head, 
then loot their gear and just roll roll with their gear. You still be able to take off uh, take out players, but overall you're in there to get loot. So you're taking the biggest backpack you can buy at the, at the time, and then taking a pistol. I usually just use a TT, or if I've got access to an APB or a Glock 18C, then I'll consider that. But I'd probably lean towards the APB. Once you find a loot run that works for you, don't be afraid to experiment and try different options. But these loot runs is pretty much your money making runs. Consider stuff like what time of the day it is and if it's better to take it, do it during the night or day. If you do have access to other servers, consider using other servers if you know certain parts of the world are uh, quieter. And you can change your servers via the launcher. However, Battlestate Games has put into, into effect that if your ping's over 150 or 180, you won't be able to select that server uh, outside of your zone. So, for example, I'm in Australia, I can't pick American servers anymore, whereas previously I would have been able to pick servers from around the world. The, hot, the closest server I can get to Australia that I can select is Singapore, just because it can get under 150 ping there. However, I do understand that some Americans would be able to select European servers or vice versa, during, and if you can consider what time of the day or night it would be there, you might have better luck looting on those servers instead. A very common sh question I get on my stream is, what le uh, which trader should I level first, and what's the best way of leveling them? Generally, I uh, just level up them as soon as I can unlock a trader, I'll spend the money and, up and upgrade it, because it gives you access to better items. The best way to do this is you try and sell your items to the uh, person that will give you the most money for that item, so if you can sell to therapist, you sell to ther therapist first, then skier, then mechanic. If you can't sell to those three traders, either the weapon or armor is too damaged and you've got to repair it first, or uh, you'll have to sell it to fence, which is your last option. Once you've got that money, you can then trade in between the traders, buying and selling to level up uh, to get that money spent. So what I would recommend to do is sell your stuff to therapist, get the money from therapist. If you need to level up peacekeeper, trade your rubles for dollars. Once you've got those dollars, buy say a pistol from or a heap of pistols from uh, peacekeeper, then sell them over to mechanical poor. You'll be leveling up multiple traders at the same time, and I would try and make it so every trader is ready to be unlocked, or you can unlock it as soon as you hit those levels, giving you access to those items, which will also help you out with say gunsmith tasks or you might be able to purchase items for other tasks as well. This will also make it easier for you to get through runs and level up that way. So what to do after level 40? So if you do get to level 40 before the next wipe, which can take some time if you're newer to the game. However, if you do get there, explore all the options between the weapons, the armor, the ammo, and find out what works for you. So then when next wipe happens, you can play around with all these different gears and then understand what's gonna work better for you. If you've leveled up multiple times, then you should really consider doing a different option like a hardcore challenge or a nomad challenge that I just started, or even just not resetting your account at all, but just trying to do runs that would be out of your comfort zone. Try using a Makarov with an 84 round mag. Try using a Toz. Try those different weapon systems and find out what works for you. Once you get better at certain firearms, it actually gives you more selection once you are, once you are leveling next time. So when the next wipe does come, and everyone's back on that zero playing field, and you pick up that firearm that you'd never used before, well, this time you actually might have had experience with that, and it will make you a better player overall. Another thing I would suggest once you hit level 40 is try the best to get over your gear fear. Good examples of this would be try and put yourself in a situation where it's like, I could run from this fight, but I don't want to lose my gear. But what if I was to take on that fight and actually win? So if you've already got a blacked out leg, pop that painkiller, Try and just do a different maneuver from what you normally would. Do a flank. Try and set off a, a throw a couple of grenades and then try and tack from a different ankle or something like that. Try and do a different peak method from what you've usually been doing. Explore the game and try and become the better player you can. And this will all help with leveling in the future. Gear fear is a real crucial thing that you should try and get over as soon as possible. During these challenges, I've found that I don't really have any gear fear because it's the only gear I've got. In my hardcore challenge, I had three lots of uh, loadouts, but if I had a multiple runs in a row where I survived, and then if I died three runs in a row, I was back to nothing. I was mostly using a hatchet after that, or a pistol. With the new Nomad challenge, I'll probably go multiple runs in a row with a TT before I actually get good gear, and then I'll be rolling around with good gear for two or three runs, and then I'm back to nothing again. So it's about using that gear, and then finding out what works well for you. A good option for gear fear as well, 
is I've always suggested if you've got a gun that you'd really like to use, save up enough from multiple of it. Get five M4s, get 10 M4s, get 10 M1As. Then you can go 10 runs in a row dying before you've actually lost all your M1As or M4s, and then you can feel a lot more comfortable using them. It's not a big deal if you lose it after the fifth or sixth time. You're like, cool, I've still got some more. You get that mentality out of your mind where it's like, if I lose a gun, that's the only time I'm ever going to get to use it. So guys, I don't want to ramble on it any longer. If you guys have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments below or hit me up on my live stream. I stream on Twitch six days a week. Go down to the link below. Give me a follow over on, over on Twitch. I'm more than happy to answer any questions you got. Try and help explain anything you have uh, a bit of confusion with. More than happy with that. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for future content. And lastly, I'll see you next time.